Well, that's the view from my truck's uh, side. Beautiful, right? Eh? But you can tell, but I am at some kind of a handmade uh, structure. The birds are singing, the sky is blue, but on this side, <laughs> the true story becomes clear. I'm at a scale. And then in the back, you see those guys uh, slowly moving in into the scale and this is uh, this is uh, exit 3 or 4 I mean mile marker 3 or 4 in Kentucky and I was I stopped for half an hour at uh, exit 2 because my um, my pilot told me it's a good area to stop and you know he was uh, I was using a pilot all through Tennessee it was 254 miles and they charged $1.45 a mile plus 4% uh, tax, so to speak, for using a credit card. So it pretty much cost me almost $400 US. But Tennessee requires uh, one rear escort on all highways when you are, you know, I think it's over 85 or 90 or something. But I'm definitely, I'm like, First I measured I was 95, then I measured with my feet, you know, because just walking instead of a measuring tape and it showed 92, but I'm definitely over 90 feet. Um, but yeah, everything went well. I uh, actually, I, I was surprised that I, I was able to book the, the guy because I, I was driving till what, like seven yesterday and I thought this is it. I'll have to wait till tomorrow and then book a, uh, pilot car on the next day because normally all these guys are very busy right but then I looked into my directory and I tried to find somebody right from that area I was one hour west of Memphis Memphis Tennessee and there, there was a company advertised and it says 24 7 and usually I don't trust that kind of like spiel but sometimes they do you know answer their phones and they did so I talked to some lady it was seven o'clock at night and she says yeah your driver will be Jason um, took my phone number asked me how I will pay and then the guy called me back like half an hour later and we agreed where we meet I said I'm in Hazen Hazen Arkansas I said I'm 85 miles from uh, uh, from West Memphis where we agreed to meet I said uh, it was exit uh, 280 280 of I-40, that's where there's a Loves, there's a Petro, there's a Pilot, I think. And this guy says, yeah, I'm driving a black uh, Dodge Charger. I said, hey, I have a Challenger at home, you know. But it turns out he was, uh, usually these guys are independent. Uh, this guy, Jason, he's just like a company guy, you know. They, they pay for his uh, gas, they, give, they pay for his hotels. Uh, that's the company car. He says they bought them brand new, like five or six of these uh, Dodge Chargers, and it, it looks amazing in black, you know? It looks really like a cop's car, you know? And he said they bought different, I said, all the same color? He says, no, he says a couple are black, one is white, and he says one is orange. Orange. And I said, well, that probably uh, will go well with some female truckers, you know? And and so he took me all across. We 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 didn't even stop. Did we stop? No, I think we drove all the way from West Memphis. It took us like half an hour to get out of the truck stop with my length, you know. But I got lucky that one of the pumps, because I did I didn't know where he was exactly inside. And he says, "What what uh, CB uh, channel are you using?" I said, "10." And so I I managed to get in that. Uh, loves because he told me he was he called me he says uh, he's at loves okay and so he says what channel are you running I said 10 and so when I pulled in I parked near the scale over there and I called him on the radio because I knew he was close by and I said Jason can you hear me this is Sergey he says yeah I said well I'm near the scale and so he came over he set up his car put all these signs on right and then it took us probably 15 minutes to get out of that 
super busy truck stop but we got lucky that, that there was a pump there was a pumps in in front and one of the pumps had uh, plastic wrapped around the you know the nozzle the, the pump so basically it was out of uh, out of commission right and I told this guy on the radio I said let's go through this pump because it was pretty wide like that lane and by the time I put my seat belt on and got ready and the guy had his signs on some guy just pulled through he had the same smart idea he pulled through but he parked there you know he so he wasn't buying fuel he just pulled through he saw that it was a dead pump or maybe he even didn't he didn't but he doesn't care they pump over there in front of the pumps you know uh, hoping that by the time somebody else comes he'll be out of there but in this case he figured he had all the time in the world but anyway it's just I hate when people do this like there was 500 spots out of 100 but anyway I'm trying to say that it was only busy near the pumps but the actual truck store was pretty much empty except that for me you know I just that the, the rig is too long but this guy instead of parking somewhere in the spot and then walking to the to the to the truck stop to buy some food he just parks right there and he was gone probably like 10 minutes you know I went to the truck I was knocking his door the engine is running nobody's inside and then I see him walking and I started honking and finally he started moving so we were out of there and then yeah so we took I-40 all the way to um, to Nashville Nashville was okay you know not too bad but they wanted us uh, instead of 155 how usually they send you like on this detour they wanted us to stay straight on 40 all the way to i-65 you know and i'm just trying to remember did we stop no i don't think we even stopped like my my only stop was at that loves i said hey, hold on let me you know run in and uh, grab a fresh cup of coffee and that's it i grabbed some coffee and we were driving non-stop through nashville and then of course uh I don't need him in Kentucky I only but there was no way to stop on the Tennessee side so he says uh, let's enter Kentucky and we'll go to the truck stop exit 2 and then we'll do the paperwork and we need your credit card because they wanted me to pay up front I said I never like to do this you know like because the guy's in the back on the freeway right like I pay him then how do I know he's in the back right like let's say he stops he stops uh, answering the radio right what am i gonna chase him you know no like i'll pay you when you know the job is done like i'm not gonna run from you right like i cannot escape a car right but a car can easily disappear you know and then if i get stopped at the scale like i did now like what do i tell him where's your escort actually yeah we went through one there was one stop there was a scale open in uh, in arkansas somewhere there and we went in they just wanted to see my permit everything was good and he the guy says uh, so you have two escorts right and i said no look at clause number 53 at the bottom it says one escort and the guy left and said oh i'm just messing with you you know nice joke i said no sir I, oh by the way i said uh, so what would happen if i showed up here and i didn't have an escort like would you guys notice and he says well right on the first page he says we can see it says uh, 95 feet long so we know that you are over you know the they know where an escorts are required he says yeah we would notice he says we would shut you down until you get an escort and give you a ticket i said okay i'm just messing with you like i do have an escort and then we got out of there and yeah we made it through nashville stopped there and my my log was showing me um, approaching violation because of course you know you need to show 30 minutes uh, in the first uh, what is it four or five hours right otherwise it doesn't give you enough time and and so I stopped there at this uh, Franklin Kentucky and I I was there for 30 minutes I started driving again boom all my hours are back on because the plan for the day was to reach um, Walton Kentucky just south of Cincinnati but that's just too far it's uh, 550 miles or 60 and basically I wouldn't have made it before before the sunset even though Kentucky you can drive all night but you need lights you know you need lights on on extremities of the load 
and the one light big light fell off right when I was leaving Oklahoma and then uh, I have two more lights but what am I the flying J but they're so unreliable they keep shutting off you know like I don't see anything wrong like the batteries are properly inserted brand new light right with a magnetic base and a very uh, low profile so they're actually very good because the wind will not knock them over like with the big light that I lost in Oklahoma it was the big one it was standing like you know vertically maybe I don't know like eight nine inches tall you know uh, and so I do have these lights but they keep uh, shutting shutting off you know like you start them they work for like 20 30 seconds then they're down each time I check on them they always they always dead like let's say I start them and then I start driving and I stop in two hours I go back they're all dark and I push the button again they start working I don't know what's something with that design you know and there's no water I tried wrapping them in some plastic because it was yeah in winter and I thought maybe some snow gets in there so I wrapped them in a the plastic same thing you know so basically the morale is I don't have the the light so that's why I cannot run here in Kentucky uh, overnight but anyway what happened here is uh, this is like two miles from the truck stop Franklin right so I saw another guy with like 12 axles sitting there and I parked next to him while I waited I should have stayed there so I started driving and there's a scale and it says open okay I slow down slow down still open all right what do you do you put you go in <laughs> you go in and it says wide loads keep right and then it says bypass I'm like what you know you never know what they mean right because when it's a wide load you're supposed to disregard some of the signs but then you have to pay attention to other signs but anyway I go on the right of the main building and then there's a scale and I'm like shoot you know I thought I was I was going around because normally they just want to see your permit so I park on the scale the guy weighed me uh, he says, let me see your permit. Then he came back. He says, let's do it again. He wants to verify the rear axles. But I said, the rear axles are like 59,000 pounds. So anyway, he says, I don't have enough on the permit. And I showed him the, the front of the machine. I said, I tried to move the... I tried to move the fifth wheel. So let me show you what's going on. Because, yeah, I am light over here. I'm only 13.6 over there, but I'm a bit over in here. But I said I tried to do it, right? So that's where my, uh, you see where, like, I'm right in the middle. But it's uh, still a bit too much because it's a heavy machine. Look at the size of this frame, right? Everything is massive. But they did this. You know, they should do something for transportation. They should not have these things over here. Because this is it. You see how close it is? And I'm straight now, right? So as soon as I start turning, uh, you know, and this is as close as I could go because we experimented with this, right? I was turning and the guy was watching these, these things so that they don't uh, break my, you know, my hoses and my, um, and they don't hit my uh, tank. That's my PTO hydraulic tank. And because of this, I could not come any closer. Like, otherwise, why would I want to, you know, risk a ticket, right? just that I said it's a weird machine you know so basically to lose a couple of thousand pounds it would be real easy I could have just you know moved over here like I don't know six inches you know ten inches I can do that like over here you see unlike that uh, cheaper wagon look how much space I have here you see I have all the space in the world to move backwards so to move backwards we basically move the fifth wheel forward but the thing is you see this this would be hitting this so that's the problem you know so and actually it's good that i'm not like american truck with 275 or to whatever 310 305 wheelbase you know i'm short and when you're shorter that puts more weight on the front right but i have like 13.5 and he he on the scale he says you have 13.8 so okay you're the boss um, but basically he says okay we're not gonna give you a ticket he says just go and uh, uh, update your permit 
just increase the gross weight he says because my permit was for like 132,000 pounds he says you need to show at least 140 because that's the maximum uh, driver is responsible for lot cleanup uh, like what does it mean like if I stay here I have to clean the lot or well, they mean don't do this yeah I'm not doing that but anyway I called I started sending emails to my uh, permit company of course now it's already getting late I finally got through to them and I said this is what I need I need to increase my gross weight on the permit yeah, because the guy would not let me leave otherwise he'll give me a ticket and they said well we can do that but it won't happen today they said Kentucky recently was uh, slow shoot you know and so I I go over there and uh, plead with the guy I said can you please allow me to stay here because this is a big parking lot right I'm not in the way and he says just yeah stay away from the cones because that's where we do training or I guess they do maybe inspections over there he says just don't park near the cones right and so I said I parked like this because I'm very long right I just parked next to the fence he says you're fine and so he I we agreed that I'm gonna stay here overnight and like I got some uh, food and that uh, exit two truck stop so I'm okay I have water I have food I don't care and I said as soon as I have the new permit I'm gonna bring it in and show it to you and the guy says yeah just uh, when you have the permit he says in the morning just drive over again like this like as if you're exiting and then you have to go he says throw the scale and he says I won't be here but just uh, show the uh, show the new permit to to the guy that's here and um, and explain the story and he says this way you'll avoid the ticket I said I'm all for complying with rules and I said except that you know some some of these machines are just real hard to work with you know so that's what's happening so I already have my uh, PA permit I have my New York permit so all I gotta do now is uh, I'm still waiting for Ohio and turns out now there's a bridge construction in uh, Cincinnati so you cannot just go from Kentucky to Ohio you know like normally you go on that I-275 East and you and you cross into Ohio but now that bridge is under construction or closed or something so you have to go west on 275 and that way you briefly enter Indiana and they say recently Indiana was charging a lot of money just for you to go four miles they're just making a killing because they can charge whatever they want you know unless people want to like that's the only way to go into Ohio you, have, you go west on 275 and so I don't I don't have Ohio I don't have Indiana uh, but next state over here is Ohio right no wait yeah next will be for me Indiana then Ohio and then Pennsylvania and New York and I still have to do the bridge bridge permit like you do it online you tell them what you weigh you know your spacings and they say yes or no and then I still have to stop and once I enter Canada I have to stop and uh, get a invoice yeah they don't they don't need the money they just give you you stop there uh, you show them your that bridge application that you did let's say the night before and they give you the bill or invoice and then you pay it by mail so at least I don't have to pay over there right away so that's what's happening so a good progress some setbacks always happens with the loads like this but the machine was behaving um, the truck is pulling okay of course at least I mean except that I see that I'm burning a lot of fuel <laughs> just I, I put in 95 gallons this morning in Hazen where I spent the night and now I'm driving I'm already at a quarter of a tank pretty much same as it was in the morning so I think I you know all this distance I hardly made uh, what did I do so 253 plus uh, it was 85 over there miles and then three miles here that's all I did and I pretty much spent 95 gallons so that will give you an idea of my uh, fuel mileage anyway I hope I'll get my permit uh, early tomorrow so I can go 
and then of course I still need Ohio and Indiana and um, hopefully I'll deliver uh, to the tomorrow's Thursday so uh, I don't think I'll make it by Friday over there but Saturday I can drive until 12 and that's the plan probably I'll cross into Canada Saturday and uh, shut down somewhere and uh, deliver Monday morning so that's the plan yeah and sorry about the something happened with the previous video I don't know what uh, but I, I recorded it in 1080p but one thing I did different than usual is uh, when I was uh, rendering the file you know like saving as a as a movie file because it was so big and the, the signal there was very weak in that uh, place where I spent the night so I chose low quality like you know on the when you sh on iMovie when you choose the quality you can go low medium high or custom actually before I would use custom with 8 uh, megabits per second but this time I went low and the file still was 1.5 gigabytes and for some reason when that was uploaded over there YouTube did not recognize it as a 1080p file even though it was it was uploaded as a 1080p but low quality you know and so actually I saved it again at a high quality I don't know if the signal is good over here I might be able to uh, re-upload that previous movie with that POV driving so that you guys can stop complaining uh, but anyway this one is recorded in 1080p on uh, my um, Samsung phone so probably the focusing is all over the place I keep zooming in zooming out sorry about that but that's Samsung uh, we'll talk to you later so delivery should be happening Monday